One of the big changes in Photoshop CS4 is huge improvements in performance. And the way they get these performance increases is by taking advantage of a GPU, which is a graphics processing unit. To check to see if you have a computer that supports GPU, let's go under Preferences. And then we're going to go under Performance. And then look under GPU Settings. What we need is a card that enables OpenGL, in fact OpenGL 2 is the minimum requirement. In this case I have an NVIDIA Quadro FX which is well able to handle this. If you don't have these options this will be grayed out and you won't be able to use these options that we're about to do. Now it's more than just a few little pretty pictures. Some of the things we're going to be able to do here have everything to do with performance and a great looking screen. If you don't have a GPU you can go out and buy one for as little as 60 or 70 dollars for a good uh, graphics card and I do recommend actually the GeForce lines from NVIDIA those are really good cards they start at around 50 60 bucks and you could go all the way up to three thousand dollars for a really good video card okay now we've discussed that let's have a look and see what this GPU performance improvements are if we want to zoom in here what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our zoom tool and then just click and hold and notice we see the smooth movement as we're zooming in. Many of you might recognize this image we're working on too. This is a uh, guitar that I created 100% in Photoshop and I've never really been able to show it off like this before. Let's hit the control 1 key and that'll take me to 100% view. But did you notice that as I zoom out or I zoom in Notice that it looks sharp at any resolution. It used to be in Photoshop we had to be at 25, 50, 75% to get the nice sharp preview, but now it shows in every magnification. That's one of the great things about this GPU, which is drawing our image on screen so fast that we don't see the redraws. Another thing we can do is if we hit the space bar, we can drag around. We've always been able to do this with the hand tool. But notice if I just drag it and flick it, notice something happens. It keeps gliding. This is something called flick panning. And this is a great feature. This enables us to get around the picture easy without so much scrolling. Now what if I'm zoomed in here and say I want to zoom in even more. I'm zoomed right into this illustration and I'm going to go up a little bit here. And say I want to look at a different part of this. Well, let's have a look at a different part really quickly. What we're going to do is we're going to hit the H for hand, and then we're going to click. And notice it zooms out instantly. This is called bird's eye view. Now we can simply click here, and then release, and it will zoom up to any point we want. Let's try that again. And notice we can very quickly zoom around and navigate around inside of our image. So this is a really cool thing. Another thing we can do too is actually we have, uh, if we hold down the Alt key, that would be Option on Mac, and we can use the scroll wheel on our mouse to zoom in and out. Notice something's going to happen though. As soon as we get above 500%, we get this thing, this pixel grid. And this enables us to have pinpoint accuracy while we're working inside at a highly magnified view. Let's just zoom out. We're going to find an area of detail here. Notice that we're zoomed in so small that our little area is very, very tiny. And we're going to zoom back in. And you can see each individual grid. Now we can still hit Control-0 to go back out and fit it on screen. Or Control-1 to go at 100%, just like before. Let's have a look at another feature that we have. In fact, I'm going to go back out here to uh, the full thing. And now what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to hit the R key. And you're going to see something amazing is going to happen. Notice this, we have this compass. And now I can rotate this image. And I can work on this as a rotated view. Now what is the reason or the thinking behind this? Well the thinking behind this is for people that want to use graphics tablets such as myself. And what happens is when you're working with a graphics tablet, and say I'm painting, I don't know, this point here, this is very easy because it goes to the curve of my hand. What if I want to paint this? It's awkward because it, it doesn't really fit the curvature of my hand. It's going the opposite way. Well, that's why I'm going to grab the R, and I'm just going to simply rotate this all the way around, reposition it, and now 
it's going to be comfortable for me to draw with a graphics tablet. And at any time, of course, with the R key depressed, I can just hit reset view and it'll go back to how it was. So that gives you a little bit of a feel of some of the new uh, GPU accelerated features. There's other things that happen too, by the way. The GPU really affects some of the performance, uh, especially in HDR tone mapping or also in other things like, for example, when you're working in the new 3D features of Photoshop, they work a lot faster. 